Use H to identify the hypothesis and C to identify the conclusion. Then rewrite each conditional in if-then form. A, x is greater than 5 if x is greater than 3, and B, all members of the soccer team have practiced today. A conditional statement has two parts, a hypothesis and a conclusion. The hypothesis implies the conclusion. In the statement in part A, x being greater than 3 implies that x is greater than 5. So, the hypothesis is x is greater than 3, and the conclusion is x is greater than 5. Now, when a conditional statement is written in if-then form, the if part contains the hypothesis and the then part contains the conclusion. So, the statement in part A, rewritten in if-then form, is if x is greater than 3, then x is greater than 5. For the statement in part B, being a member of the soccer team implies that you have practiced today. So, the hypothesis is a person is a member of the soccer team, and the conclusion is a person has practiced today. Therefore, this statement rewritten in if-then form is, if a person is a member of the soccer team, then he or she has practiced today. Write the negation of each statement. A, the car is white, and B, it is not snowing. The negation of a statement is the opposite of the original statement. In part A, the opposite of the statement, the car is white, is the car is not white. Therefore, the negation of this statement is the car is not white. In part B, the opposite of the statement, it is not snowing, is it is snowing. Therefore, the negation of this statement is, it is snowing. Let P be, you are in New York City, and Q be, you are in the United States. Write each statement using symbols and decide whether it is true or false. A. If you are in New York City, then you are in the United States. If P, then Q. This statement is true. New York City is in the United States. B. If you are in the United States, then you are in New York City. If Q, then P. This statement is false. If you are in the United States, you do not have to be in New York City. C. If you are not in New York City, then you are not in the United States. If not P, then not Q. This statement is false. Even if you are not in New York City, you could still be in the United States. D. If you are not in the United States, then you are not in New York City. If not Q, then not B. This statement is true. If you are not in the United States, then you cannot be in New York City. Decide whether each statement about the diagram is true. Explain your answer using the definitions you have learned. A. The measure of angle AEB equals 90 degrees. B. Points A, C, and D are collinear. And C. Ray AC and Ray CA are opposite rays. In part A, to determine whether the statement the measure of angle AEB equals 90 degrees is a true statement, first notice the right angle symbol in the diagram. This right angle symbol indicates that angle AEB is a right angle. Now, by the definition of a right angle, the measure of a right angle is 90 degrees. So, in the diagram, the measure of angle AEB is 90 degrees. Therefore, this statement is a true statement. In part B, to determine whether the statement points A, C, and D are collinear is a true statement, first locate points A, C, and D on the diagram. Now, by the definition of collinear points, collinear points are points that lie on the same line. From the diagram, you can see that points A and C lie on the same line, but point D does not lie on this line. Therefore, this statement is a false statement. 
in Part C to determine whether the statement ray AC and ray CA are opposite rays is a true statement, first locate ray AC and ray CA on the diagram. Now, by the definition of opposite rays, two rays are opposite rays if they have a common endpoint and are collinear. From the diagram, you can see that the endpoint of ray AC is A and the endpoint of ray CA is C. So, ray AC and ray CA do not have a common endpoint. Therefore, this statement is a false statement. Rewrite the definition of complementary angles as a single biconditional statement. If two angles are complementary, then the sum of the measures of the angles is 90 degrees. When the conditional statement and its converse are both true, you can write them as a single biconditional statement. So, to write the definition of complementary angles as a single biconditional statement, you first need to verify that its converse is true. In the definition of complementary angles, let P be two angles are complementary, and let Q be the sum of the measures of the angles is 90 degrees. The converse of a statement has the form, if Q, then P. So, using this P and Q, the converse of the definition of complementary angles is, if the sum of the measures of two angles is 90 degrees, then the angles are complementary. This statement is a true statement. So, because the converse is true, you can use the definition and its converse to write the biconditional statement. A biconditional statement has the form P if and only if Q. So, using the P and Q in the definition of complementary angles, the biconditional statement is two angles are complementary if and only if the sum of their measures is 90 degrees. Make a truth table for the conditional statement, the negation of not P implies Q. To make a truth table for this conditional statement, first create a table with five columns that divide the conditional statement into five parts, P, Q, not P, not P implies Q, and the negation of not P implies Q. Next, in the first two columns, you need to list all of the possible combinations of truth values for P and Q. P and Q could both be true, P could be true and Q could be false, P could be false and Q could be true, or P and Q could both be false. Next, you need to determine the value of not P. Recall that the negation of a statement is the opposite of the original statement. So, where P is true, not P is false, and where P is false, not P is true. Now you need to determine the value of not P implies Q. This conditional statement is only false when a true hypothesis produces a false conclusion, or in other words, when not P is true and Q is false. In the first row, not P is false and Q is true. So, not P implies Q is true. In the second row, not P is false and Q is false. So, not P implies Q is true. In the third row, not P is true and Q is true. So, not P implies Q is true. In the fourth row, not P is true and Q is false. So, not P implies Q is false. Finally, you need to determine the value of the negation of not P implies Q. Where not P implies Q is true, the negation of not P implies Q is false, and where not P implies Q is false, the negation of not P implies Q is true. This gives you the truth table for the conditional statement, the negation of not P implies Q.